Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another casted game. We have got an incredibly special one for you today. Spawning in the west of the map, playing as the French, we are watching Give You Anxiety. And he is going to be playing the color blue. His opponent, who spawns on the east of the map, known by the name of Neptune, and he is playing the Chinese, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first Chinese cast we have had, I think, ever on this channel. I don't think I've ever seen a Chinese cast before. For anybody unfamiliar with Neptune, an incredibly talented Chinese player, I think currently sitting at rank one on the ladder. So we are going to be, oh, sorry, rank one on the ladder, uh, rank one for the Chinese players. I think he's sitting at about rank 25 at the moment. So we are going to be looking at his, oh, he's actually sitting at rank 36 currently. He's got a streak of two and a win percentage of 56%. So he is going to be playing the Chinese for us. And we're going to be taking a look at his build order. We're going to be breaking it down. We are breaking down the best Chinese players build order right now for you guys. So opening up with that Imperial official. He's got seven villagers out here on, on food, I was going to say. Now, note that he is using his mill. He's not using the town center. And the reason why is because you cannot use your Imperial official with your town center. It also doesn't give you uh, tax uh, when you have your, um, your villagers drop off at the mill. So we're going to see his uh, his Imperial official begin to move towards the uh, the town center very soon, picking up that 26 gold that is sitting there, I expect. Uh, we don't know. Getting those sheep in nice in and close uh, to that uh, that mill and uh, doing a pretty job, a pretty good job getting the, the triple-double out there nice and early. Now going to begin expanding out with that lumber camp. And I tell you guys what, I'm incredibly excited about this. So not actually picking up that gold just yet. So we may actually see him look to expand out towards a gold vein instead. Now keep in mind that um, it, it's incredibly important to keep your Imperial official out here for a number of reasons. For anybody wondering about this Imperial official, the way that it works. Now going to be picking up that gold. Let's see how he goes. Uh, so with... With each sheep, okay, you've got 250 food in here. The Imperial official turns that into 300. So your villagers are going to be dropping off 10 at a time, right? But with the Imperial official, he turns that into 12. He makes those resources come out of thin air. Now that applies to all your resources, okay? That applies to your gold mine. So if you're in the late game and you've got 4,000 gold up here, well, no, you don't, my friend. You've got 4,800 gold. Because the Imperial official, as long as he is supervising that mining camp, he's going to be increasing that for you. And so that obviously applies to stone, applies to wood, applies, applies to deer, everything at all. But there is a caveat, and that caveat is you can only have four Imperial officials. And in addition to that... Oh, did he just did he just bug that out? I think he just bugged that out. Oh, he totally just bugged that out. Oh, how, how is he doing that? Oh my lord, he's, has he found a glitch or something? So the Imperial official, it's meant to put these buildings on, on cooldown uh, when it collects the gold. And it gets really annoying because if you go and collect three gold from it, it will actually, um, the way that it works is it will put the building on cooldown. But he just went back and, back and forth a whole bunch of times and actually just collected that gold. Uh, that is incredible. Now, there's a couple of buildings that the Imperial official cannot actually uh, supervise. So, as an example, you guys might be thinking, oh, water maps. It would be great because the, the Imperial official, he actually improves the efficiency of, um, of buildings uh, by, by 200%. So, you can make a lot of fishing boats. And at the same time, um, you're able to... Uh, also um, buff up the amount that your fishing boats are dropping off, but they can't actually supervise on the fishing, or on the docks. Does not work. Now actually going to be transitioning over, doing a big transition right here. We've got all of the villagers moving across. He's got still got this guy out on the farm. So what's going to be happening? Going down with the Barbican here. And how many villagers? He's actually got four villagers that are out. Getting a second Imperial official out and about on the map. So second Imperial official is going to come in. Heading over to the lumber camp. Going to be heading down to the stone. Are we going to be seeing a two town center play here? Now, he, he, keep in mind, he's playing against France. GUA is playing on France. You can see he's got all of his villas under the town center. He's looking very healthy. He's definitely going to be playing an opening with a standard uh, opening. Uh, against France, um, or, or as France rather, just going for the School of Cavalry. You can see he's aging up here at 420. Nice. Very nice. Give you anxiety. Doing a great job there. Uh, so his opponent's going to have to react to this. Um, now, one of the things to note is GUA is going to have cavalry out here immediately. So the hunt forward hunt is in a terrible position. So he's not going to be out expanding that way. So we need to take a guess. Where do we think he's going to expand? It's going to be one of two positions. Position number one, position number two. I don't think you could go... You could potentially go here, position number three. Or you could even come down on this gold mine. I don't think that's likely though. So he's going to be aging up now, 445. You can see his macro is actually pretty darn decent at this point. Uh, he's gathered up more than enough to drop that second town center down. He's going to begin moving his villages over, heading over to this wood line, and now gathering up the gold from this all-important uh, all mining camp. 
So let's continue breaking down this build order. I tell you guys what, I'm incredibly excited to see this. I have no idea how he's going to be able to hold as the scout continues to scout out the base. GUA is going to spot this stone outcropping. He's going to know that his enemy is sitting on 2TC. And the question is, how is he going to be able to hold this early aggression? Because one of the things with French and with their early aggression is that it is so strong. Uh, looks like we might see second town turn up getting placed in a bit of a strange spot, I would say. Not up against anything. I mean, I understand it. It, it uh, doesn't necessarily have to go up against resources. And it is going to be pretty decent when it comes to dropping farms down. So maybe that's his thought process behind it. He's going to be able to get easily uh, get all of his farms around there. He's able to put one, two, three, I think four. Actually, no, three farms here. Three there, three there, three there. So a total of 12, nice and close. So GUA now going to be looking to get a bit of a raid up towards the back. Managing to take out the first village. He's got to be careful with this Imperial official taking the first hit. Second hit. If he loses that... Oh, it was close. GUA gave up on it. GUA could have gotten that and probably could have gotten out. Oh, it would have been close. GUA looking to save his uh, the life of his uh, his units there over the life of his enemy. But uh, now for GUA, he's going to continue to move in at the front, poking and prodding. He doesn't actually spot out this second town center, but he's going to be able to see it. Uh, and now I'm suspecting that we're going to see Neptune, Neptune begin to supervise his barracks. Uh, any second now, so lights or spearmen going to be coming out as well, uh, just looking to defend this mill. And keep in mind, he is still using these sheep that he found on this mill, so not keeping them underneath the town center. So we really are trying to break down this build order at this point, understand exactly how he's going to be able to play against GUA. And obviously, for anybody unfamiliar with GUA, top 10 player at the moment, incredibly talented. So Neptune really doing his best to go up against uh, GUA and, uh, and demonstrate that Chinese is actually a viable civilization. It's just that people don't like it. So... Who knows? Maybe maybe I don't give up on China. Now, we are obvious, obviously on Arabia, and Arabia is considered by many to be the best map for French. Uh, looks like he's going to manage to get that spear, uh, taking up the majority of damage. Oh, he's got to be careful here. That's going to cost him a life right there, and that knight does go down, so a really nice pick up there for Neptune. This early in the game, player scores are still quite even. Neptune now going to begin dropping down a double archery range, so looking to begin transitioning. He's got these just a couple of spears out, not a huge amount of spears, just enough to sort of look after his his food resources at the north here so i'm curious to see what direction gua is going to be going in here whether he looks to go for a second town center himself whether he looks to age up to the next stage or whether he looks to do a ram timing so we've got a blacksmith coming out and i think ladies and gentlemen that should give you your answer as to what it will be eight villagers going to be moving out towards the middle of the map probably looking at taking this boar here give you anxiety is a big fan of the boars and obviously with map control it's going to mean he can take this uh, without too much of an issue. So I would expect that we even see this knight look to connect with this boar here and begin taking it. Scout also going to begin looking out. And look at this uh, this coverage right now that he's got. So now the uh, the knight going to be tanking this one up. Now keep in mind, knight's going to be able to heal this back. He does almost have chivalry. I say almost. He doesn't have it yet. Uh, but he'll be researching this very soon. And that way he's not going to be losing any HP on these villagers. So a very nice move from him. Only losing about 100 HP. And just keep in mind, he's going to be able to heal that one up. Now, speaking of healing th that one up... Uh, we'll take a look at his mill. Uh, he doesn't actually have survival techniques coming in yet. So a really important upgrade that he should be prioritizing on getting. Uh, Neptune uh, also spots out the outpost that GUA throws down here. So one of the common things that we do see players do with these forward positions is throw down an outpost. Gives you line of sight, gives you protection. Really nice advantage that you can carry with you to the mid game. A couple spears now going to be looking to continue... Uh, fighting off and that looks like the uh, imperial official is going to go down so gua sacrificing his knight for it there uh, and so now we've got a question about the transition period so neptune comes into his transition period here how is he going to play it is he going to look to go into a dynasty is he going to continue to look to play age two what kind of scouting is he doing of his enemy because at the moment he hasn't really scouted out the base of his opponent doesn't know that there's an archery range yet other than the archer that's just come in uh, to the town center so he's going to know that his enemy is on an archery range as well uh, so going to be potentially picking up a villager here he's got to be careful GUA probably going to get another one sitting up on 37 villagers at the moment GUA sitting over on 37 as well this is the and this is the classic France play guys France sits on one town center you have to go to town center just to match them just to match France you have to go to town center if you want to get ahead of a French player, like, good luck, man. Good luck. This is what makes them so strong, because they pick off one or two villages here and there, and they're managing to uh, to be able to keep up with you in village accounts, just because their town centers do produce so far. So we'll see if Neptune can capitalize on his enemy. Uh, only going for one town center. We don't see any stone yet either uh, behind this, so very happy camper out there for him. GUA not looking like he's going to be going up at the moment. 
Uh, but now continuing to get out more and more of these archers. We see Double TC producing uh, villagers at the moment. He hasn't had perfect upkeep on these. Uh, so I would like to see him get a couple of Imperial officials out onto these archery ranges. Just utilize all that extra wood that he's got. I would expect that we might even see him look to transition over to farms very shortly. He is going out onto berries. But one of the things to note is that he's been able to secure his wood line very effectively with this Barbican, at least on the front line. Okay, he's done a great job with that. And we see Siege Engineering coming in now. Is he thinking of a, an age two timing push right here, Neptune? Cheeky little Chinese player. I did not expect this. Now GUA gonna be uh, dealing with a little bit of a push as the archer goes down. Scout gonna be able to make it away as well. And is this what he's going for? Is it like a two TC timing? But it's almost like a fake out. Like he's not he's not training a huge amount of villagers here. It's, it's almost like he's not really booming. It's, it's kind of like he's just looking to invest in resource. I'm kind of scratching my head here. I mean, he is gathering up a lot of resources coming out, just not a lot of production facilities at this point. Uh, he, he does have that ram, but I'm curious to see how GUA is going to be able to deal with this. Still not looking to age up. Uh, dropping down a second stable, still got that single archery range. Do we see a ram come out from GUA? GUA's force is looking quite small considering the fact that he's on one base and he's really just sticking to like farming or hunting. Like He's doing a great job of hunting. Uh, I don't think we can actually click on that board to see how many... Oh, nope, I don't think I got it. There we go, 1,400 resources still left on this bad boy. So quite a lot of resources left on that. But now we've got a ram going up for his opponent. So really looking to just play age two, Neptune is. Um, and Archer's going to be moving in. A, a significant Archer mass here from Neptune. I don't know exactly where GUA's put his resources, whether it's gone into his upgrade potentially, but this ram going to be looking to push this position. Going to have to force these villagers back. And uh, GUA going to be looking to head probably towards this northern boar. He does know it is up there. Uh, but looking to actually just move towards this hunt. And now GUA looking to uh, try and do a bit of defense here as his enemy begins to push out Neptune, uh, taking advantage of the two TCs. And I do have to say, I kind of like this build order. The fact he's gone two TCs, but hasn't gone particularly hard on villager production. He's sitting at 44 vills at the moment. GUA sitting at 47. So GUA has more villagers than him. So I, I wouldn't say that this would be all in, but obviously like to keep up with France, the, the problem with France, right, is they make villagers so fast that for you to be able to keep up with them, you need a second town center, right? It, 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 it's the way that the sieve works. So you just make a second town center just to keep up with them. Uh, and Neptune really demonstrating his prowess here as he continues to push out across the map. A lot of resources in the bank here. A lot of knights coming out right now for GUA. Neptune needs to be careful. He's got the plus one range armor. Uh, doesn't have plus one defense as he tries to get a couple of charges in on these units. GUA going to be falling back and the archers going to be doing their best to pick off the spears that are in here. And I think this might be a complete cleanup here for GUA as Neptune tries to get a decent connection here. Uh, but it's not going to be too well received, it seems. Managing to actually survive with a lot of these archers and doing his best to pull these away. So really nice cleanup there from GUA, but not going to be able to get the full cleanup that he really needed or deserved in that encounter. At the same time, we've got ourselves a wolf down here. And now, now that Neptune's been able to push out of his base, it looks like he's going to be able to grab down here. He's got more uh, knights beginning to harass him as well. And GUA looking to push in. We see him pushing forward with those archers. He's just got enough archers to pick off the spears. That's all he wants. Kill the spears and you're fine. As long as you have got those archers and now multiple units continuing to attack Neptune's villagers. And GUA looking very strong. He's up about 400 points at the moment. Neptune going to try and defend, try and hold. Do we see any more upgrades coming in at this point? No, we've only got that plus one range, which is going to help out with his spearmen being able to survive a few more shots. But GUA not looking to press his advantage at the moment as he actually comes back up towards this ram. So I would expect that GUA sends out a couple more villagers out over this way. We can see how many he's got over here. So it wouldn't be surprised if he sends seven or eight back over this way, drops a mill right next to this boar and uh, and looks to begin regathering over here now that he's lost that. So only one ram going to be cleaning that out. So not a huge loss there. GUA, another nice raid back here. So we'll take a look at the base of his opponent. A lot of resources uh, are being spent at the moment and a huge amount of spears coming out. So Neptune really starting to look to balance between these. And still double TC, 46 villagers out for Neptune as he continues to be harassed at multiple angles. GUA sitting on 49, Neptune on 46, but Neptune with 38 military, um, GUA only with 30, but keep in mind he does have these knights. So fairly balanced at this point, I would say. And now GUA was looking to secure this gold mine with the outpost, but obviously has decided against it. So I think in this position, if GUA manages to get up to the third age, he's going to be in a decent spot. And I really like the way that Neptune has used to his advantage that early aggression 
and really tried to push out against GUA. One of the things I've, I've kept in mind is that he's never really lost his mass. He's always been falling back into his reinforcements. He's de that's something that I've definitely learned for him, from him. And don't be afraid to push out. And don't be afraid to, to stall your two town centers if you know your enemy is only on one town center. Now, he's still got this scout alive down here to the south. He has scouted out GUA's stone that is down here. 1,500 stone on it. He knows that GUA is not going for that second town center. So it's going to be safe for him to do that. Still no textile upgrade. One villager going to be going down. Second villager probably possibly going to be going down. Now going to be going down as well. And Neptune yet to even hit a dynasty at this point, which is probably the right move. Um, I, I will just note, it is very nice. Uh, for some reason, I don't actually have the dynasty button in the middle of my screen. And can I just say, that is so nice. Can you imagine playing China and not having this dynasty button? Oh my lord, isn't it just beautiful? Village is now going to get cleaned up here on the front line. Neptune's got to be careful as GUA begins to chase away his villagers. And Neptune's army is looking pretty formidable here at this point. I don't think GUA is going to be able to deal with these spears. Uh, considering that they're, they're, they're so strong right now. Plus one uh, armor still on these bad boys. No upgrades coming in just yet, despite gathering up a little bit of gold for Neptune. What other upgrades has he got? Doesn't seem an awful lot. So probably going to need to look to, at some point, begin gathering gold and begin looking at getting those upgrades because GUA, on the other hand, we take a look at what he's got. Three archery ranges and a stable out. He's got that chivalry upgrade. He's got he's getting his spe specialized pick. He's got his first, or he's got both of his uh, lumber camp upgrades, and of course he's got uh, all of his hunting upgrades as well with wheelbarrow in. So compare that over to his opponent Neptune, uh, who is at the moment sitting on. Uh, he's got the hardened spearman upgrade, which is to be expected. Still up here towards the north, more harassment, and now villagers got to be careful here. Uh, blacksmith only got that plus one upgrade, but. We take a look at the mills. No upgrades at all through here. No tier one upgrades at all on the mining camps or on the lumber camps either. And now going to be losing another Imperial official as the Imperial official goes down. A little bit of a fight on the front line as GUA trades out with his enemy. And GUA looking like he's in a commanding position despite being on one TC. And now look at this. The knights begin to harass these villagers. And this is just something that horsemen cannot do. This is something only the French and the Rus can do in the second age. These knights just demonstrating why they are so strong. Neptune now down to 32 villagers at this point. Losing a huge amount of villagers against GUA who sits very comfortably on 59. So he's capable of just sitting on one town center throughout this entire game. I would have loved to have seen some potential walls up for Neptune. Maybe a wall just up here across the top would have helped him out a huge amount. Maybe a wall back here towards the back line would have helped him as well. But GUA has been quite uh, quite adamant about killing those villagers. And now, speaking of villagers going down, GUA got to be careful as his 19 villagers on that gold mine look to fall back. He does have access to other gold mines. No, that is the only other gold mine he's got. He's got one and two at the front of his base. So he's going to need to get back out here if he wants to secure that gold. Now, I take that back. He's got a third gold mine behind him. And more siege happening now. GUA doing a great job. We'll take a look at the villager count. Down to 30 villagers for Neptune. And he's having a, a tough time. A couple spears out here to protect villagers. And China really in a bit of a difficult spot. This is definitely the window for China to have a, a, a difficult spot. I think Neptune would still be in this game if A, he had been maintaining village produ villager production throughout the majority of the game, and B, he had walled up and been able to protect his villagers because spears just aren't going to cut it or at least got some form of, of outposts here because unfortunately you can't you can't run away from these, these royal knights. They're just so fast, so good at collecting you up. And he actually spots out some villagers down here to the south. So I'm curious as to whether he's going to look to apply pressure down there on that, but China looking like it might be in a bit of a weak spot here, looking a bit underwhelming. I, I would definitely be keen to follow around Neptune. I think I might look to add him as a friend and see how much I can learn from him. As you guys on YouTube would know, I'm a big fan of China. I love China, but I just feel like they're quite underwhelming at the moment. And I think right now, Neptune, he's not really playing to the strengths of China, but at the same time, playing to the strengths of China is like turtling up and waiting until 45 minutes into the game. So we're at 20, we're at 18 minutes at the moment. So it's not like he's really had a chance to play to the strengths of China. Keep in mind, if he does go into that dynasty, he's going to be investing a lot more resources in both villages and as well as that landmark. And it's not really going to provide him much in the short term. Compare that to the landmarks of the Chinese, and you're getting a lot more, to the uh, French rather, and you're getting a lot more out of them. Spears now, gonna look to, uh, did we just see a charge land on that, uh, on that outpost? I think we might have, but this is part of the reason why you can't use spears against knights. They just get cleaned up completely, and now the knights are gonna look to siege down this outpost and get that juicy, juicy reward as more knights look to join them as they begin to loop around the base. A little bit of a, a 
a, uh, a jostle for position. More villagers going to be actually be going down for Neptune. So using that scout to perfection. We did talk about it earlier. Where is that scout? I think it got picked out off over here. So apologies for missing that. Bit of action heading off over in uh, multiple directions. But it looks like armies were traded out. Relatively limited. And Giwei, I would say at the moment, is definitely in the military lead. He sits up, Neptune sits on 51 military production or military population. But keep in mind, 14 of those are spearmen. Compare that to Giwei, who sits on 59 and 56. He's very happy, very comfortable with himself, but he's going to have to start adding in farms as he actually clicks up to the next age. Guild Hall going to be going up now for Giwei. As he manages to come back um, to his base, Neptune does, but uh, I feel like it's going to be a little bit too late. From here, the main play for Giwei, he goes up to the next age. He gets elite, uh, or he gets veteran archers. He gets veteran uh, royal knights, and he is going to be absolutely fine. Archer getting misrouted, but spotting out some enemy units. We'll take a look over at Neptune, uh, and we'll see what he's got in store for us. G is G Way actually got a lot of resources in the bank? Could potentially be. I don't know what he's looking for here. Uh, maybe just a lot of upgrades. Maybe that's what he's thinking about. Uh, at the at the same time, it could just be that he doesn't have the resources to. To, um, to to really gather from food at the moment. He's got a single berry bush that's back here. All of his other food sources seem to have dry, dried up. GUA now aging up. We'll take a look at his upgrades as they come through. Uh, he's got that... Uh, oh, that is Neptune's upgrade. I do apologize. Let's switch over to GUA. There we go. Uh, so GUA has got the veteran upgrade for his archers as well as the veteran upgrade for his royal knights. We'll take a look at his economic upgrades. Nothing coming through at the moment. And getting both plus two uh, for his... Uh, blacksmith so very happy with himself uh, probably going to be waiting for at least one of those plus twos to come in which ha which plus two is he prioritizing we'll take a look prioritizing wedge rivets so going for that plus one ranged armor and definitely the right choice against a mass the size of this uh, very large mass of archers so 34 archers out for neptune here uh, a little bit of a stock take, 43 villagers for Neptune. He is looking to age up at the moment. You can see how many villagers he's got on gold. But the wild thing is he doesn't actually have any um, Imperial officials that are out on this. If he just brought this one Imperial official down, he'd be feeling very good about himself. But going to try and get up to the next age and try and find a bit of a window there. He's trying his best uh, to do that. But GUA probably going to be looking for a timing here. Uh, there is the potential for a siege workshop to go down as well. I wouldn't be surprised. There it is. So we actually do see double siege workshops. So no surprises coming out there. Using that advantage that he's got sitting up in age 3 and also going to be dropping down a monastery and begin looking to claim relics. So relics are going to be the name of the game. GUA going to be doing a great job of picking that up. So really looking to secure his mid-game transition here. Veteran archers out for him now. Do we have those veteran royal knights? Indeed we do. They're looking very nice with their shields as we follow this unit around. Hold on, give me a second here. There we go. Look at that beautiful shield that they've got with the uh, the French. I don't know what it's called. The something Le, Le Fleur? I, I can't remember exactly. I just know it's it's got a name. But uh, looking very, very mighty. Very, very steadfast. Plus two on the way in now. Neptune hitting the castle edge. Going up with a lot of... Uh, villages on that astronomical clock tower. Gonna need to get those upgrades in sooner rather than later. It's called the Feu de Lise, apparently. The Fleur de Lis. Uh, I'm saying that with my best French accent. Still no economic upgrades for him. No other plus ones coming through other than that plus one armor. And uh, GUA looking like he might be putting Neptune in a little bit of strife right now. Neptune yet to get a clockwork spring sprinkled down right now. Now it's finally gonna be coming out. Buffing it up with his Imperial official, but Imperial official gonna be going down. An unfortunate position for this astronomical clock tower. Probably wanted it in the back of his base, to be honest. Now adding in a whole bunch of farms under the town centers as well. Really unfortunate time for him to be spending that much wood uh, on farms. And GUA's army looking very dominating at this point as the mangonels begin to roll in. And Neptune spots it. You see the Springled turning around. Looking to get damage on it, but uh, just chilling out for the moment. Just having a good time. Mangonels managing to get one shot on the back line. Second mangonel shot went on the clockwork spring. Springled, so not the best use of the mangonel shots, but we'll take a look at the mangonels as they continue to fire in on the the army of Neptune. And Neptune, I don't think he can push this. And his clockwork springled, or clock tower springled, isn't going to be able to come out because it wasn't at the back. It was built at the front. So a little bit of oversight from him. Now GUA getting in another raid, multitasking like a madman. And Neptune in a little bit of trouble, I would say. I don't think there's any real way that Neptune can get back into this game. He's down about 1,500 points. Village account is down 
45 to GUA, 72. So about a 27 villager difference. And now going to begin pushing in as well. We watch these mangonel shots on the back line. First shot, second shot. And that is what right there why you make mangonels, baby. Mangonels destroy everything. If you are wondering, oh, you know, China gets the nest of bees. That's a good unit, right? No, it is not. That is the mangonels. That is why mangonels are so much better than the nest of bees. They are incredible. Your entire army is gone in the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye, it is gone. Look at that. Look at that beautiful shot. Nest of bees sitting there. Uh, uh, I don't know where to shoot. Uh, uh, that's the nest of bees. And that's why China, right now, they're not looking the best. They're not looking the best. Give you anxiety now. Going to continue pushing in. Uh, probably needs a little bit more siege than this, but this is probably going to be enough as we continue to see units flooding in across the map. And GUA doing his best to clean up the the base of his opponent and good game gets called. Neptune taps out. Give you anxiety, Victorious. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll, I'll leave a... YouTube, rather. I'll leave a link in the description to give you anxiety. Make sure you check him out. An incredible content creator, an incredible player, and most importantly, an incredible guy. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one.